Good evening, everyone. The time now is 7.59. We'll give it another minute or so for others to have an opportunity to join, and we'll get started. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining our full Gospel Fire and Deliverance Tabernacle online Bible study. This Bible study does occur every Tuesday night from 8 to 845 Central Standard Time. Our facilitator is Apostle Gemma Valentine. Apostle Valentine is also the pastor of Full Gospel Fire and Deliverance Tabernacle Church located at 1008 Irwin Avenue in McKinney, Texas, 75069. The services are on Saturdays, 12 o'clock for our School of Wisdom, followed by a 1 o'clock worship service. Thank you so much for joining. At this time, we are going to ask that you please mute your lines so that we can provide a recording, which will be posted to our Facebook page, as well as the YouTube page at Watchmen and Gatekeepers Global Watch. Thank you again. Please mute your lines as I turn it over to Apostle Gemma Valentine. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank you all that are online tonight. We appreciate you joining us. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, once more we are appreciative and very grateful unto you for your grace and your tender mercies. And tonight, O oh God, as we go into a very important study of your word, we pray that you will bring clarity and understanding to the hearers because God event, and that event is uh, uh, the, the judgment seat of Christ, appearing before the judgment seat of Christ. So tonight, as we are about to go into the Word, bless us in a special way, Father. Thank you for doing it, in Jesus' name. We will begin our study tonight by reading the, from the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 20. And it reads thus, And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short while. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast nor his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads. All their hands, they came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. And this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death had no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and will reign with him for a thousand years. Now, when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, 
to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loved. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it, earth and sky, fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. When death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Praise the name of the Lord. Our study is from the book of Revelation, and we are starting from chapter 20 because we want to do a study on the great white throne judgment. And in this study, we will also look at the first and the second resurrection. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, when we look at um, the second verse of chapter 20, it talks about uh, the dragon. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan. Amen? He is a dragon. He is an ancient serpent. He is the devil or he is Satan. Right? And we see that um, after Christ's return and events uh, that took place in chapter 19, Christ, Satan will be bound and imprisoned for 1,000 years in order that he may not deceive the nations anymore. This implies a complete cessation of his influence during this time. After the thousand years, he will be released for a short time in order to deceive those who rebel against God's rule. Satan's most characteristic work is to deceive. So for a thousand years, there's going to be peace and earth, Christ will have his millennial reign on earth, and there will be no more deception. Um, in verse 3, in verse 3 it says here that he threw him into the abyss and locked him. This is an angel, threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for, for, for a short time. The nations that will exist during Christ's reign on earth are formed from those believers who are alive at the end of the tribulation. Although at times the term nations is used specifically of the ungodly. So you will have the ungodly nations and the people who did not go with Christ in the rapture. Then let's look at chapter 4. I saw thrones on uh, verse 4. I saw thrones on which were seated those who were given authority to judge. Those who sit on the thrones are probably the overcomers from all churches of, of all time. 
possibly included the Old Testament saints. Those who came to live after Christ's return are said to be faithful who died during the tribulation. John does not mention the resurrection of the church saints who have died, for this occurred when Christ removed his church from the earth and took it to heaven. That is during the rapture. There's another part in Revelation that says when Christ returns, he's coming back on a, on a, a white horse and so on. But now we see now he's coming back for this um, a thousand-year reign. In verse 4, this thousand-year reign of Christ is sometimes called the millennium, meaning a thousand years. Right? Number one, it was predicted in the Old Testament. Number two, Satan will be bound. Number three, Christ's reign will be shared by the faithful of his churches and possibly by the resurrected Old Testament saints um, and martyred tribulation saints. Number four, the people ruled by Christ will consist of those on earth who were faithful to Christ during the tribulation and who survived until the Lord's coming, and those born during the, the millennium. Number five, no unsaved persons will enter that kingdom, the millennium kingdom. Number six, those reigning with Christ stand far above all the nations, for they will minister to and rule both Israel and other nations. Number seven, there will be peace, safety, prosperity, and righteousness throughout the earth. Number eight, nature will be restored to its original order, perfection, and beauty, like the Garden of Eden. Number nine, the nations during this reign are obliged to continue in faith in Christ and obedience to his rule. However, some will choose the way of rebellion and disobedience and will be punished. Ten, at the end of the thousand years, the kingdom will be handed over by Jesus to the Father. Then will begin the final and everlasting kingdom of God and the Lamb. We look at verse 6. It says, Blessed are the whole and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. We are in Revelation chapter 20. Now, the first resurrection. This term includes the resurrection of Christ and all God's people in contrast to the resurrection of the wicked at the end of the millennium. So tonight we will look at the first, we'll do a little study on the first resurrection, and there will be a second resurrection. Now, in verse 7, it talks about Satan being released. At the close of Christ's reign, Satan will be released. One, Satan himself deceived in believing he can yet defeat God, will be allowed to deceive those who desire to rebel against Christ's rule and will gather a multitude of such rebels together. And, and it, in two it calls, it says Gog and Magog. This represents all the nations of the world and the, their spirit of rebellion against God and righteousness. Number eight, verse eight. Here he is deceiving the nations. Um, this is the last rebellion against God in history. Many of those born during the millennium reign evidently choose, choose to reject Christ. They will choose to reject Christ's visible lordship and choose instead Satan and his lies. And God's judgment will be total destruction. So verse 8 says, And they will go out to the 
He will go out to deceive the nations in the four, four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand of the seashore, the final Armageddon. That's the final battle. Verse 10, the devil and the blake of burning sulfur. In verse 10, the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown and they will be tormented day and night forever. Now Satan's power will not last forever for God will throw him into the lake of burning sulfur there he will not rule, but will be tormented day and night. And we want to look tonight at the great white throne in verses 11 to 13. The judgment described here is called the great white throne judgment and includes the loss of all ages. Some believe that those saved during Christ thousand year reign on earth will include be included in this judgment. Um, we see here in verse 11 where the earth and the sky fled. This may refer to the destruction of the universe and the creation of a new heaven and a new earth. The Bible tells us that God will create a new heaven and a new earth. And in verse 14, we hear about the lake of fire. The Bible portrays a terrible picture of the final destiny of the lost. One, it speaks of trouble and distress, weeping and gnashing of teeth, everlasting destruction, a fiery furnace. It speaks of gloomy dungeons eternal punishment, a hell where the fire never goes out, a fiery lake of burning sulfur, and the smoke of their torment rising forever and ever. There is no rest day or night. Indeed, it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It will be better for him if he had not been born. That's what God, Jesus, said about the man that will, um, uh, Judas, the man that betrayed him. Now we see that the believers of the New Testament church were keenly aware of the fate of those who lived in sin. It was for this reason they preached with tears and defended God's infallible word and the saving gospel against all distortion and false doctrine. The solemn fact of eternal punishment for the wicked is the greatest motivation for carrying the gospel to all the world and doing everything possible to persuade people to repent and receive Christ before it's too late. And then in verse 15, it talks about um, the book of life. Praise the name of the Lord. So we thank God now that that there is a book of life. It says, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So that's our little summary of uh, chapter 20. And let's look at the um this let's look at it in a, a greater detail. The account of the great white throne judgment in Revelation twenty eleven to fifteen is one of the most sobering passages in the Bible. It tells of the final judgment of the inhabitants of planet Earth. The last sentence of the passage is chilling. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. No one can read that sentence without realizing that how we live matters. Praise God. 
Almost all Christians have some idea about a future judgment when everyone will stand before God. One of the most common beliefs is that he will evaluate our lives, our good works and our bad. And then, like a high school teacher um, grading on a curve, he will decide who gets into heaven and who does not. But that is not really true because God, God's program of judgment is far more sophisticated than the grading we get from our high school teachers. Praise the name of the Lord. So a final judgment is coming. Uh, we can be certain of that because the Bible said so. It is appointed for a man once to die. After that, it's the judgment, according to Hebrews 9.23. But few Christians realize that there, will not, that there will be not one, but two days of judgment. First, the judgment seat of Christ, and second, the great white throne judgment. Our relationship with Christ will determine which court will try our case? You know, in the natural, we have various courts. But in the spirit now, at the judgment seat of Christ, we have the, we have the two judgments, the judgment seat of Christ, and second, we have the white throne judgment. Our relationship with Christ will determine which court will try our case. Now, the judgment for Christians will occur at the first court, the judgment seat of Christ. Immediately after the rapture, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, according to 2 Corinthians 5.10. The purpose of this judgment is not to pronounce condemnation. No one judge in this court will be condemned, for all will be followers of Christ. Who sub These are people who submitted their lives to him, and he became the Lord of their lives. All their bad deeds will be covered by grace, Praise the name of the Lord. The purpose of this judgment is for Christ to as, 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 assess, assess every believer's earthly works to determine rewards for faithfulness. Amen? He's going to look at all our words, tr works, try our reigns, search our heart. He looks be, be, at the motives and the intents, why we did this, good or bad, good or evil. So it's not just the deeds. He's looking at the heart. Amen? Praise God. At the great white throne judgment, however, unbelievers and those who pretend to be Christians will stand before God. Amen? Here they will face the consequences of rejecting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. This judgment is the final bar of justice in God's plan for the inhabitants of planet Earth, and there will be no grading on a curve like how our teachers graded us. The accused will be judged by the black and white standard of absolute truth. You know, uh, we get very defensive uh, when we are confronted with truth because most humans don't like correction. Most Christians don't like to be corrected. And so uh, they get very defensive. But here God is judging us with absolute truth. 
and he is going to have uh, um, uh, what the um, what we have done, the works we have done. He is have, going to have all that as proof. Now, the white throne judgment will be nothing like our modern court cases. At the white throne, there will be a a judge, but there will be no jury. A prosecution, but no defense. A sentence, but no appeal. No one will be able to defend himself or accuse God of unrighteousness. It will be a judgment of grim finality. You're not going to get there and argue with God on why you did this and who did that and who did. No, this is about you. These two judgments bring into focus the two different resurrections. You have two judgments and you will have two resurrections. Amen? The prophet Daniel writes, Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting com- contempt. Amen? The first resurrection, those that will be resurrected to everlasting life. The second resurrection, they will be resurrected to shame and everlasting contempt. That is found in Daniel 12 too. Jesus said, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all those who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of com- condemnation. John five twenty eight to 29. So after our natural bodies go back to the earth, um, we are still still going to be alive. Those people who have died and gone forth before us, they're still alive somewhere. And they, those in the grave will hear the voice of God. They will come forth because their soul is existing someplace. Amen? They will come forth either to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. All The Bible clearly teaches that everyone, all who have lived in this earth, every man, woman, boy, and girl, will be alive somewhere forever. Every individual who has ever lived, whether saved or unsaved, will be resurrected. More than 2,000 years ago, Christ was raised from the dead at the rapture. At the rapture, the saved of this present age will also be raised from the dead. So so as Christ was raised from the dead, those of us who are saved in this present age will also be raised from the dead. Seven years after the rapture, at the close of the tribulation period, the saints who were martyred during the tribulation will be raised from the dead along with the Old Testament saints, according to Daniel 12, 1-2 and Isaiah 26, 19. This will mark the first resurrection, also referred to, to the resurrection of life. So you have the Old Testament saints, You have those that were taken up during the rapture, those also who were saved during the tribulation, who were martyred, and all of us will be raised from the dead, and this will be the first resurrection. And the Bible says, Blessed is he that had part in the first resurrection. So when Christ returns to reign during the millennium, Not one believer's body from Adam onward will be left in the grave. The first resurrection will have been completed. Now in Revelation 20, we learn about the 
second resurrection. So, during the first resurrection, no believer's body would remain in the grave. The only bodies remaining in the grave will be those who will be resurrected for uh, the resurrection of condemnation for their judgment. So now we are learning that there will be a second resurrection, also called the resurrection of condemnation or judgment, according to John 5.29. It is the resurrection of the unbelieving or uncommitted dead, and they will live in eternal death. Now, this resurrection will take place 1,000 years after the end of the tribulation. Amen? So we see Christ, the rapture, after the rapture, seven-year tribulation. Then we see Christ coming back to, on, on the earth for the 1,000-year the re reign called the millennium. And after the 1,000-year reign we will see there will be another resurrection. It will include all the unsaved dead from creation to the millennium. Amen? So the first resurrection will took, pla took place from Adam to um, away all the saved, the sons of God, the patriarchs, and, and people from the Old Testament, down the Christians in the New Testament, those caught up in the rapture, those during the, the um, saved during the uh, the tribulation, they got saved. They took part. They had taken part in the first resurrection. Now we see now all the unsaved dead from creation, from Cain, down to this millennium, thousand year millennium, right? We see after this resurrection, there will be no grave occupied by the dust of any inhabitant. There will be no more graves. Everybody will be resurrected, first or second resurrection. Every individual will have been resurrection, re resurrected to eternal life or eternal death. Amen? Now it says here, I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Now, while God's word does not specify where the great white throne judgment will be, we, we do know it will, where it will not be. It will not be in heaven. It will not be on earth because the heaven and the earth fled away, according to um, verse um, 11 in Revelation 20. It cannot take place in heaven because no sinner can enter the presence of God. And the great white throne judgment will have to take place somewhere between heaven and earth. Now, the judge upon the great white throne is none other than Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. We discover this through Jesus' own words. The Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Son of Man means he was born of the lineage of David. Amen? He was a son of man. Now, in his, in his letter to the Romans, Paul wrote, God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of people that have secret sins that they want to hide. God will judge the secret sins of men. Amen? Peter declares that Christ was ordained to be judge of the living and the dead. Christ will judge the spiritually living at the judgment seat of Christ, amen, at the, first, at the first judgment, and the spiritually dead at the great white throne judgment, the second judgment. Christ himself will conduct the trial, and no one is better qualified 
because he did all he could to save mankind. Uh, but since man has rejected him, he must judge mankind. Now, it says in verse 12 to 13, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and hell and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. Now, as the John who had the vision of the great white throne judgment, he saw the dead, all who died without a relationship with Jesus Christ. Their bodies were summoned from their graves and from the sea, and their souls were called from death and Hades to stand before the judge of all the earth. Oh, that sounds uh, 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 something that will cause you to shake and tremble. John says that this group will be made up of both small and great an expression found often in the Old Testament and occurring five times in the book of Revelation. The term indicates that all classes of people will be present from all ranks in the church and in the world. There will be many religious people at the great white throne judgment. Amen? This multitude is diverse in, a, in its religion. Buddhists will be there, Muslims, Hindus, Protestants, Catholics, um, non-denational Christians, full gospel. Everyone will be there. We see those who believe in one God and those who believe in many gods. We see those who refuse to believe in any God at all. The atheists will be there. The agnostics will be there. We see those who believe in meditation as a means of salvation and those who believe that doing good deeds was the path to eternal life. They did a lot of good deeds for people, but Jesus they rejected. We see the moral and the immoral the priest as well as the minister, the nun as well as the missionary, they all will be at the great white throne judgment. What will happen to these religious people when they stand before the great white throne? Jesus tells us, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have we not prophesied in your name and then and, and done many wonders in your name, uh, cast out demons in your name. And then Jesus said, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That is in Matthew 22 to 23. We are living in an age uh, people want to, uh, uh, will go to the dark kingdom for power, to do miracles, signs, wonders for money, and all these different things. Uh, and they will use the name of Jesus uh, while they're doing all sorts of uh, uh, egregious works. Uh, hallelujah. Not living a life inconsistent with the work, the word of God. And Jesus says, I will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you who practiced lawlessness. Contrary to popular opinion, believing in your chosen truth, people have things that they refuse to believe. One person said to me, I am a skeptic. But you believe in your chosen truth, even though you're in church uh, trying to serve God. But um, that does not make you a true believer. There's only one truth, and that is Jesus Christ. We either believe in him, we believe his word, or we will perish. We will stand with the, the, the atheists, the unbelievers, the immoral. We will stand with them at the great white throne.
judgment. Cultural standing will mean nothing before the great white throne judgment. You could say, well, I'm a Canadian, I'm an American, I'm a, 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 a Trinidadian, I'm, I'm from India, I'm from Africa. You could, you, all of that does not mean absolutely nothing when you stand before the great white throne judgment. Both the small and the great of this life will be there, will stand before God. The, the wealthy, the beggar, the prince, the pauper, the statesman, the scientist, the lawyer, the doctor, the professor, the author, the mechanic, the housewife, the farmer, and the criminal. Amen? Because Christ is no respecter of persons. And although a great cloud, crowd of people will stand before the judgment seat of Christ, we will be judged, they will be judged, everyone will be judged individually. Everyone who stands before the great white throne, rich or poor, famous or obscure, beautiful or plain, powerful or weak, intelligent or slow, religious or not, will have this one thing in common. They died without Christ, and they have no hope. Only this group of people seen at the white throne judgment is what the Bible calls the spiritually dead. Praise the name of the Lord. So we see tonight in recapping, there will be two resurrections and there will be two judgments. Amen? And the purpose of the great white throne judgment will be, it says, I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. The books were opened. And then another book was opened in which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Next week we will take a look at the book and uh, I want you to stop to think what is written in those books that God is going to judge me for. Amen? If you're going to have your part in the first judgment, he's going to judge you for, your, for the things that you did and you will be a judgment for reward. But the second judgment is about works, your works. May God bless you tonight. I turn over to Sister Rolanda. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle Valentine. Thank you, everyone, for joining on this evening. Again, we should have this up within the next 24 hours to the Facebook page, which is FGFDT Church. Also, it will be posted to our YouTube page at Watchmen and Gatekeepers Global Watch. So thank you again for joining, and please come back and join us next Tuesday at 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. Thank you and good night.